Hi my friends and welcome back to another tutorial, another lesson in painting. Um, you know, just try and teach the world uh, the simplicities and the enjoyment of oil painting. Um, right, this week, now I know it's been a while, uh, because what I'm doing is I'm alternating um, tutorials for YouTube and my Patreon channel. So for instance, I'm going to show you one that we did on Patreon um, last week, I think it was or the week before, we did a lovely two-part tutorial on a beautiful kind of a landscape. Let me show you what we did. Um, this is my beautiful cottage with a lovely sunset sky and look at those clouds. We did this last week uh, for two weeks, part one and part two. Um, isn't that just gorgeous? I really, I really like this. Beautiful foliage, stonework, grass, a little pathway, some reflections. So we did this over on Patreon. Um, it's such fun over there. If you want to check it out, just click the link at the end of the video and go and take a look and see what's there because you're missing so much fun, really. You really are. It's a fantastic place for us to gather and communicate and talk and chat uh, about all things paint related, painting everything so uh yeah, just take, take a look and check it out click one of the links there at the end of the video right this time i'm going to do something slightly different light very bright here um slightly different you may like this you may not like this it's just just to take a break from landscapes do you understand what i mean it's nice to kind of branch out and try something a little different every now and then this is a beautiful um scene of a swan Okay, picture this, a swan in the water, ripples coming around the swan, but it's a sunset, okay, the sun is going down in the sky, there's no sky, it's just the sun hitting the water, creating beautiful sunset colours on the water, and a swan just in the centre, and these lovely, beautiful, realistic ripples then around the outside of the swan, so something different, like, you know, something just, let's expand, let's expand our knowledge, let's say, okay, just to have a bit of fun with this and try and expand and learn different techniques, all right? If it's not your type of scene, you still will learn a lot about colors, mixing colors, about creating ripples and reflections in water. So you can leave your swan out, you could even put something else in there, or you could just leave it, um, like for instance, a little droplet of water creating ripples, something like that. It's gonna be really, I hope it's gonna be really nice. Um, I'm a little apprehensive, I'm a little worried, as normal. That's completely normal. You wouldn't be an artist if you were, you know, completely confident with everything that you're painting. That's all part of the learning process, and for me as well. So I'm gonna show you what I have here, look. Canvas, um, stretched, wrapped around canvas. Let me just move over here. Um, this is a deep, stretched canvas okay and i'm going to be painting around the sides as well so it'll be wrapped around and it can hang just as it is on the wall so i have 18 by 14 canvas a lovely palette full of colors i'll tell you what i have as i'm here i might as well i've made i have titanium white naples yellow burnt umber cadmium yellow pale cadmium red alizarin crimson some burnt cyanide which has decided to run down on the palette a little lamp black and phthalo blue i also have a little cobalt blue just for variety okay so that is the setup i have some tissue i have some linseed oil in turpentine in here um that's my tub of linseed oil i don't think i'll need it for this canvas i primed the canvas once already and i gave it a rub of some light sandpaper it's really smooth it's almost like a very very smooth board okay so that is that is the setup okay i'm going to get this camera set up here and we're going to start painting that's the most important piece painting let's have a bit of fun with this and get some color on canvas don't go anywhere okay there is the photograph isn't that beautiful now it's a little different i know it's you know it's it probably might be a little bit more on the complicated side from a lot of beginners but i think there's you know it's it's very easy to simplify something like this and you don't have to go to the extreme lengths that i will be going to with the detail especially on i mean being honest the most difficult part for me in this painting will be those ripples okay creating the light and the shadow on the ripples i mean painting the swan will be easy enough itself um 
you know, just take your time. Get the drawing right, I suppose, is the tip of the day. Try and get the scale right. Now, on that picture, the scale, is, it's small enough, but I don't want to make it too small on the canvas. I want the swan to really make an impact on the canvas. So I'm just going to put... Uh, now, let's pick a point where to start. I'm going to go at the very end of the neck somewhere, okay? Go around here. It seems a bit further over on the... You see, I'm using slightly wider canvas. The picture is slightly more square. So it's a matter of trying to stretch it out. So I, I leave a bit more on either side, basically, okay? I'll go from here. And I'm going to just very, very roughly, very quickly, let's just get some sketching in. Let's just get something, something done. Um, I'll go up under the wing, and I probably have to go at this now a couple of times, but do forgive me, all right? Uh, my drawing skills are not the best, I'll be very honest. Um, you know, people assume that because you're an artist or oh, you must be fantastic at drawing and sketching and all that kind of stuff now i'm very good at sketching landscapes and that kind of thing and buildings that kind of stuff um, that might be a good idea to try something like that sometime uh, maybe a sketch on some paper or something but in general i'm not very good at sketching i'll be very very honest i like to be honest with people i like to give my honest opinion about things all paint related but i'm just not very very good at sketching okay so i like to just kind of give a very rough outline of something do you understand what i mean no i don't know is that a bit big uh, ba, 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 ba. let me have a look i think we'll go a little bit smaller so i'm do you know what i'm going to see have i got an eraser here somewhere i know i have one somewhere but where is a mystery. Um, let me see, where did I put it? It's around here somewhere now. I'm afraid I might have to just go at this without the eraser. I can't find it anywhere. It's around here somewhere, but God knows, with the mess inside this place, I'll just attempt to make this a little bit smaller on the canvas, okay? So ignore these lines. Um, those up trying to get this just nice now i just want i want to get it nice and it comes up like that and it turns like that and it comes down now it doesn't have to be perfect again remember it's just a very rough guess i'll probably end up painting over the head anyway so look let's not be too bogged down about trying to get this just right and it comes around the neck is fairly kind of thick isn't it it thins slightly and then it goes out again. That's not bad, look, we can, as I said, we can mess around with this as we're going along. And let's put the top, the wings in here. Again, I don't want to go too big. I don't want to overpower power the whole painting with this. So I just want to take it nice and handy, be careful. Um, just a very rough outline of some of the lines that you can see, do you know what I mean? and okay like that the shadow kind of comes down it kind of covers half the wing doesn't it the shadow area so this is all shadow and this is shadow pair and then it kind of comes out underneath that to a point doesn't it now that's not bad okay I think maybe the head needs to be slightly bigger or maybe the wing needs to come out a bit more like that and maybe this will be a little bit smaller like that but look in general it's not bad okay as i said we will paint over a lot of these lines anyway so we can correct this as we go do you know what i mean so i think that's all right not too too bad um i might later make the head a little bit higher up perhaps all right just maybe make this a little bit more pointy and look i'm not going to go crazy yeah it's a simple little representation now the ripples the ripples are important i want to get these just right because i'm going to be following these with my brush later Okay, just a very kind of simple representation. They sort of, they kind of meet up here, don't they? Like that, and one or two then. 
this will be similar to the tutorial that I did of the raindrop, the water drop in the um, water that time. I did a tutorial, turned out quite nice actually, and that's really what kind of gave me the inspiration to try this one. Now I'm going to imagine these lines are coming around. Just want to try and replicate them a little. Um, it's not as prominent on this side. This is very much in darkness here as well, isn't it? And they just sort of fizzle out then, don't they? And they become much more horizontal as they come up, you see? So, we'll go with that for now. It's just a very loose sketch, that's all. Right, on to more pressing matters now, colour. Let's get some colour. And let me get a brush. Um, I have my large stubby, all right? And I know a lot of you were trying to get a hold of these off of me and the link wasn't working on the channel. I was actually putting in the wrong address, the wrong link. It was my older link that I was using, so I've updated that. Check the description, you'll see the link there for stubby brushes, all right, if you're interested in them. Let's get some color. So I'm happy enough now with the scale of this and everything. I think it suits the canvas. So top, nice orange, a nice warm orange. I'm not going to go overboard with the colour on this. Um, I don't want it too rich. Okay, so I'm going to start. Ba, 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 ba. Let's take some Naples yellow. That's a nice soft colour. Okay, and I'm going to go with a nice bit of turpentine in this now. Not too much, just enough to make it go smoothly across the canvas. So take plenty of colour. I'm going to go with um, I was thinking initially crimson, but I think cadmium red would give me a slightly warmer hue. Uh, slightly more to the photograph. You can see that. That's kind of a nice peachy kind of a colour. Let's take a hint of cadmium yellow pale. And I might just go with those colours for now. Just to try and match what's on that picture. That's what I do. I kind of look, keep looking at the reference photograph with the colour that you're mixing every few seconds. Um, just try and match it up as, easy, as best you can, really. Mess around with your colours, have a bit of fun. Let me have a look. Uh, that's not bad, is it? Let's just give the entire canvas a nice light coat of that colour, right? Just up here. And when I say the entire canvas, I mean down to around here, okay? Let's say the top of this one. And you may find you may find, if your canvas is a little bit dry, I find that now just very slightly on the dry side, it's kind of soaking the paint slightly, even though I primed it still. Sometimes it takes two, maybe three coats of primer. So what I'm going to do is, I have here my bottle of linseed oil, all right? I'm gonna take a little bit of that with some tissue paper, okay? I'm gonna just dampen my tissue like this with some oil, and I'm gonna rub it on the canvas, just where I'm painting here now, just for now, okay? And that will help all of these colors soften together nicely, and it will keep, it will actually keep the canvas on the wet side, the oily side, but it's not going to be too oily. So if you're using, if you're kind of painting using the Bob Ross kind of technique, any of those types of techniques, and they use the liquid clear or the liquid white and stuff like that, um, I've had a lot of questions about that. The problem is, when using all those liquid clairs and liquid whites and etc, that they're changing the colours you're putting on. So if I have a liquid white on there and I put this colour on, it's going to lighten the colour naturally because you already have white. And the same with, with liquid clear is not too bad, but it's a little bit too oily for me. The linseed oil I find, it, it soaks into the canvas just a little, but it still gives you plenty of movement with your paint. It's not overly oily. Just a little bit is all you need. So let me show you. Because I know that was a bit dry when I was just painting that two seconds ago. It was a little bit on the dry side. Now, look. It's nice and oily. And it will help. Now it will kind of start to dry in a little in a few minutes, you know, naturally. But it won't be as bad as if it wasn't there. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to start adding just a hint of crimson as it comes down. I just want to warm it ever so slightly because it's going from 
a nice warm orange into kind of a blue and dark blue and etc etc so the trick is not to go from a yellow to a blue the trick is to go from a yellow to sort of a mauve pinky kind of a color and then into your blue that for me is very important i think because a lot of people will try to just mix their purpley blues into the orange and if you have too much yellow or too much blue it you end up with a kind of a greeny color a greeny hue on the canvas so i'll always when i'm coming down into a purple from a yellow i'll always make it slightly more and more pink as it comes down does that make sense so i'm just going to go along like this softening keep softening and i will add more yellow up here so okay don't worry about that i'm going to start taking more pink as it comes down little touch of the yellow so now we're going from a warm orange to a kind of a pinky orange all right i'll take a little hint of naples yellow in that just to soften the color ever so slightly and make it a little bit more on the opaque side as well now you can see look it's kind of a nice pinky orange isn't it and you could probably eat you know what i'm going to do i'm going to paint over the head look let's paint over the head because i wasn't kind of happy with the head anyway so i can just kind of draw it with my little fine brush afterwards or a pencil but doing it this way is much easier because otherwise you're going to be trying to you know go around the head with the orange with the color of the water and then afterwards you have to try and make your head perfect so it doesn't mix with the color of the water um, so just paint over it and you can leave it dry and do the swan then some other time let me take some more crimson a uh, little naples yellow i'm getting plenty of paint on my brush here now okay tiny hint of the yellow and i mean look i'll take a hint of white just to lighten it ever ever so slightly a little bit more yellow we have a nice thick creamy kind of a pastel sort of a salmon kind of a color there now that's lovely i like that and that's the kind of color that's over here so you can see we now have more of a pink hair which means it's going to be much easier to start putting mauves and purples into this so just remember wherever you're mixing a yellow with a blue have plenty of mauve pinks in between just to neutralize those yellows and i'm trying to kind of speak in practical terms i don't like using um you know fancy terms like tone and contrast and all that kind of stuff you know well not a huge extent um i don't like using complicated words in painting because number one i don't even know half of the terms they use in painting um number two i just find it makes it much more complicated for beginners um watching videos especially on youtube if lots of people are using very very difficult to understand terms with painting so um, i just like to keep it simple straight and simple no fancy vocabulary vocabulary on this show this show is about painting and having fun and just trying it and giving you some inspiration okay we're coming down nicely we are coming down nicely we're getting there um let me think where should i go next i think i might go all the way around here and fill in this with a nice purple okay so we're now going to start going from pinks into purples so dampen the brush again same color i didn't clean it i'm just picking up some thinners and i'm going to start taking some crimson and a hint of now we can use cobalt or phthalo phthalo is very rich but it's much more vibrant cobalt is a kind of a slightly cooly cooler kind of an earthy blue but phthalo blue is a much more vibrant one now look at that you see that's lovely and i know this color is not very prominent on the photograph but this is sort of this is like my base color uh, before i start putting on some real kind of proper blue so you see i'm going to soften this up into that nice warm pink up there now that softens much easier into the pink so if i mix a very strong purpley blue and put it in here you would start seeing muddy green colors already so i'm starting with more and more pink in your mix before you put on the blue 
Now this is a much stronger blue, so I'm just going to dampen my brush again, pick up more crimson. And because now we have a more red in this, okay, because there's more red, that's like a plum. I could take a hint of Naples yellow just to tone that down, you see? Because remember, very, very important, the most important thing I would say to you with blues and yellows is blue and yellow do not mix. Um, you know, as in the sense of when you mix them on the canvas together, they end up green. If you don't want green, always make your blues more on the red side first. So I'm going from yellow to a pink, look to a plum, I'm going into a plum. And that way I can then put a nice deep purple on top of that. And I won't have any mucky colours. I haven't cleaned my brush once yet, so I started from the bright colours and I'm working down to my darker colours. Take a hint of Naples yellow again, more pink, a touch of more blue. I'm using the blue very sparingly because you see, it really, really overpowers your painting. It's so rich. Just use tiny, tiny amounts of that blue, okay? Be very careful. Now, I'm gonna just go straight across like this. I might go up slightly And what I'm going to do then is, I'm going to start forming some of the sort of the ripples with this, you see? So I'm using the tip of my brush and I'm kind of dragging them out and letting them sort of fade out to the sides like this, look. So the hairs on the brush are creating these nice little lines on the canvas. I'll do the same over here. Just an impression of the ripple kind of following each other across all the way around in a slight arch. If you're not confident with this now, you don't have to do this, you really don't. But you can start to see the ripples forming, can't you? Now, I'm no expert on painting raw water and reflections and all that kind of thing. In fact, I really consider myself mostly amateur. I don't consider myself a real professional artist. Um, not comparing to not by comparison to some of the artists on YouTube, some of the artists are really amazing. Um, but I like to think that I can help beginners just kind of get the basics, get the basics of painting done, you know, and understand the basics. That's what I love. Now also another thing is when we're painting around the sides of the box canvas, you could just take some of that colour, you see, and follow that colour around the sides. Do you understand what I mean? Follow it around the sides. I'll show you when it's finished, but it's basically a case of, once you have the colour on your brush, wherever you're going, just go around the side as well quickly like that. And it just gives it a nice, kind of a nice frame. It sits on the canvas better. And especially if, if it's not being framed, um, it just, it looks, a hundred times nicer hanging on a wall when you can see the side of the canvas is well painted. So I'm going down now and making my colours slightly deeper. This is still only the first step, okay? I'm going to be putting a nice rich purple now over all of this. So let's keep going. Little crimson, little phthalo blue, a little Naples yellow. I'm really using the Naples yellow only to make the colour more opaque because if I use alizarin crimson and phthalo blue on their own, it's going to be very transparent, okay? Because phthalo blue is a very transparent color. It's a rich, transparent color. And crimson, alizarin crimson is also. So if I use two of them together on their own, they're going to be very see-through, transparent. So the Naples yellow, it just, helps gives it that sort of chalky feel that it just gives it more power for covering. So I'm probably gonna just focus on the ripples and reflections and stuff today and we'll come back and do the swan in part two. Is that a good idea? And I know you're screaming at probably screaming at the canvas now saying, you know, there's too much pink, it should be blue, purple. Don't worry, this is just this is just the base colour, okay? It's just to give me something on which to paint. And this will show through the blue later. 
and give us some wonderful colors okay now i'm going to go around in a swooping fashion like this okay just to create the impression of the ripples already you can start to see them so now we are cleaning my brush just quickly i'm going to start putting on some more blue color you can see a lot of blue up here and you can in fact if you look at the reference photograph you can actually see if you look close enough you can see there's almost a hint of a bluey green in that color now i don't particularly like that color so i'm not going to that's because the blue is naturally mixing with the yellow even in the photograph i don't like that kind of greeny blue in the painting so i'm going to keep it more warm first okay i'm going to go for more warm color first now this might look like a black on camera but it's a very deep purple okay i need to get some crimson and i put cadmium red on my palette but i wasn't even sure if i was going to need cadmium red to be honest but i just said i'd have it there in case but it doesn't matter now crimson and phthalo blue that'll give us a nice deep purple kind of a grape red grape kind of a color okay and let's just try this first and the idea is to start making this then more and more blue as we go okay so i'm going to start with this you see and i'm just dragging it lightly my brush now is very dry there's hardly any paint on it i'm just dragging what's on the canvas across the canvas okay because i just want a thin coat that's all i want so i'm going to start now just building up my blue my purpley blue and i come over here what i'm going to do then is up here look i'm going to start dragging some of it out i'm being very careful because i'm going into that kind of a yellowy color i'm being very careful i'm very lightly dragging it across the canvas so i'm not actually mixing it into the yellow more sort of going on top of the yellow does that make sense and start creating some patterns you see just little swoops coming around and the whole idea of this is really just just start building layer upon layer upon layer you see i wouldn't go directly in here with a rich blue we'll say i'll start with warmer colors and build them up let's try over here okay now that's slightly on the pinker side but it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter pull a bit more into that let's take a hint of naples yellow not too much just to sort of lighten it very slightly and i'm going to kind of follow some of these imagine they're going through this one and coming back out the other end okay And up by the orange, I'm not going to use this color. I'm going to just warm it slightly because I'm going into that yellow. I know I'm going into kind of an orangey yellow up there. So I'm just making it slightly more pink, slightly more on the pink side. Just adding little bits of crimson in as you go. All right. I want this kind of slightly on the warmer side up here. And again a little bit more pink again as it comes up um, i don't like that kind of light bluey green up there i'm just going to keep it warm just for now but i'm going to just kind of swoop these across ever so gently and let it sort of fade off i'm giving it a slight curve on my brush okay or on the canvas slight curve and i'm bringing it in slightly as it comes further down you see and then letting it sort of soften out around off over to the sides see no that's not bad so far is it we're starting to get the impression of this 
you know, this lovely reflection going on. It's starting to happen slowly. Um, okay, now I'm going to start really going for some strong colour down here. So it's time now to beef up the colours. I'm kind of happy enough with my underpainting as such. So I'm now really going to go, go for it. Let's really crack on. Look, lots of thick paint, lots of crimson, lots of phthalo blue. And the phthalo blue will really make a nice impact here, okay? Let's get some rich dark blue down here. I'm following this all the way around. Again, look, it doesn't have to be exactly like the photograph. Even the shapes of, you know, it's, it's only just a representation, that's all. If you want to go for a photographic like painting, um, you know, you really want to take your time. It, it, it's going to take you hours, days, if not weeks. So I'd like to have a bit of fun when I'm painting. I don't like to sit there for hours painting one little spot. Um, that's probably my downfall, to be quite honest. But look, I like spontaneous sort of painting. I like to just load my brush with colour and go for it. Uh, not too much thinking involved. Only regards to colour, that's all. But, you know, look, let's just put the painting on. Fill that canvas with lovely colour. So now that blue is really starting to pull through, isn't it? And I'm starting to add more phthalo. Look. And if you notice, on the painting, or on the photograph rather, um, there's lots of rich dark colours and they really highlight the highlights of the painting. So like, you see the light hitting those ripples just there? That's what really catches your eye. So don't be shy with your colour here. Put plenty of colour on, loads of it. Okay? Loads of dark colour. Don't be shy. I'm not going to go with black because I have a lot of black in the reflection. So I don't want to overpower the painting with too much of that. Um, I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to move to a smaller brush. Okay? How is that looking so far? We're starting to get somewhere, aren't we? And it just took us a half hour, not even, 20 minutes. So, you know, you can... You can take your time at home, by the way, with this if you feel like I'm going too quickly. Just pause the video every few minutes. Just take your time. I'm going to start moving to another flat brush. I have um, a medium flat here. I also could use, let me find my medium stubby brush. I bought some new brushes. I have a couple of brushes here, look. I'm going to go with a medium stubby. These are just wonderful brushes because they're so flat and they have a lovely edge. Let's start putting in a little bit more detail on some of the ripples okay i just want to refine the, the ripples a little bit more dampen that brush and let's mix up some more of this color i need some crimson so this i know this is probably not the type of scene that you're used to painting all the time but i think definitely it's worth a try uh, because you'll be very surprised of the dramatic effect you can get with these wonderful colors you know so i'm mixing up this now it's not too thick but it's not too thin either some crimson some phthalo blue and to be honest i don't even think i needed cobalt blue you know um so you could call this sort of i don't know a limited palette perhaps let's go with a little bit more blue and then i'm going to take perhaps just a hint of white okay tiniest hint so I have a light, plummy kind of a colour. When I say light, it's not black as such, do you know what I mean? There we go, that's a bit better. And I'm going to start picking out some of these lines a little bit more, okay? Just like that, just let it flick off. Um, there's a lot more on this side than there is on that side, but you know i don't want to be copying that photograph exactly so i'm going to just put a few in myself like that then we can sort of come around with another one like that i'm basically just going having a bit of fun with this i'm going to put a few more we get a nice flat edge on my brush you see that and i'm going to put a few more up here They're really nice. 
and let's go out a little bit more and they're going to get smaller and smaller and they're going to just start, start disappearing off to the side you see like that and I might do the same over here let's do one or two Now, see the way that's kind of coming down at an angle? I don't like the way that is. It should be more upright, more kind of more going up towards centre. So realistically, these would kind of meet in the middle, so to speak. Ah, that's not bad now, is it? And as I go out further up, I'm going to start adding more crimson because we are going up into that yellow. So a little bit more crimson. You can see there's kind of a mix, mix match of lots of different colors, lights and darks going on up there. And as I come, I'm going to go to the bottom then. I'm going to start adding some more blue into this. I'm going for some darker now i want to refine some of these the easiest way to do that is pick the point where they meet okay come around like that okay probably the easiest way to do it There are just rather three big ones here. Um, the rest of it is very sort of um, very just kind of distorted water, all right? Now, I really hope you can see what I'm doing okay on camera. I hope the lighting is right. I hope everything is okay. And let's go down. Let's go over here. Let's bring a couple of nice ones in here. And let's come down here. So we're getting there, look. We have the general direction of the water put in, you know, the general direction. It's not bad. Um, I might start adding a bit more light blue in. Now, I know you think light blue, but I can see a lot of light blue in the round the water down here so I'm thinking should I move brushes should I switch or should I keep the brush I have hmm tricky question I'll keep one what I have for now I'm going to take some phthalo blue a little crimson and some white okay this is going to give me a nice bright blue but I'm not going too too bright I'm going for a very light bluey mauve in fact I may go more to the blue side of it. Phthalo blue and some white. Let's just try this for a moment. Let's just try it. I can see kind of lots of light sort of blue kind of flicking in between some of these here and there. And it sort of softens into the pink. So let's come down here on the top of that ripple. Um, I can see lots of blue. And a lot of this now, you see, is going to be softened together with the soft brush. So don't think there's going to be just lots of solid lines. I'm going to soften a bit in down here as well, look. Because you can see little bits of the light blue hitting here and there, just down at the bottom. Take a hint of pink, just a hint of crimson, just to warm it slightly. And we'll come over here to this side. I'm just popping a little of that colour in. You can see a lot of it in around here as well. And this is all just a, the early stage. This is very early. This is the very early stages of the reflection, okay? Because I really wanted to... Now, I wanted to avoid the green there, but look, that's fine. You can hardly notice it. Um, I want to put a lot of attention on 
the ripples okay now starting to kind of starting to come to life a little so you go for a bit more of that color I'm going to come down here and start adding little hints of that. Isn't that lovely now? That's lovely. I like that colour. So it sort of brings the deepness of the purple to life. And let's go, let's go here. Let's put a little bit of it here. Take a bit more white, a little bit more blue. And I'm going to start really giving that some nice impact creating some movement in the water down here. You see that? It's just a very rough kind of a movement. You see? It just helps tell you that the water is not completely still. And you can, honestly, you can just simplify this. If, this, if you feel this is too advanced for you, just try to simplify it. Don't you don't have to go into all this detail. Just give it a shot. Just have a go. Okay? I promise it's much easier than it looks. Just try not to overcomplicate your work, okay? Just try and just keep it nice and light and simple. Um okay, I'll put a couple around in here. We have a lot of black around the centre, so I'm not too concerned about that, really, to be honest. I think I might start actually putting that black in. Now, I stick with this brush. I'm just going to first sit back and just take a quick look how this is looking. That's a nice, nice complimentary painting now, isn't it? Warms against cools. Uh, we still have a bit of light to put in up there. Will we do that now, actually? Let's do that. Come on. I'm eager to get that in. I'll take a dry brush, I'll dampen it slightly. Okay, clean flat brush. I'm gonna go in for some Naples yellow. I need some of that. And I'm going to zoom in very soon because when I'm doing the detail in these ripples, I want to show you exactly how I'm doing it, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in very soon. Naples yellow and cadmium yellow and a little white. I'll start with that first. Now, it's just a case of popping a little bit of it in here and there. Look, side to side. Let's just give the impression of the sun bouncing off of the ripples there, okay? Just nice and simple, look. Giving a slight curve, you see? Like that, okay? And then let's get some white with some Cadmium yellow. Let's go really bright with this. Lots of thick paint. And I'm kind of softening it into the colour that's there. Nice and soft. Then I'll go with pure white and soften that in as well. To look at the colours actually just looks like white, doesn't it? Okay, how's that? What I'm going to do then is take a little bit of, actually I'll take more of that colour on the brush, right? And I'm going to just suggest a few ripples up here, look, coming down at an angle. I'm holding the brush horizontal, but I'm wiggling it down like a little snake at a slight angle. And you can go over there to suggest the impression of the ripples coming around like that, you see? Up 
pop a little bit over there just to accentuate the ripples outwards and I know it's you know, look it's not on the photograph but I think it might help tie everything together now there's another color I can see up there and I want to put that in so I'm just going to clean this brush I'm going to get I can see a nice rich dark orange I'm going to take some cadmium red and some cadmium yellow I can see up there a hint of that color in between the sunlight and that kind of pinky mauve color I can see this up here I'll show you what I mean look watch now when I show you so just up there where they sort of meet there's a hint of this nice warm color coming down a bit more red I would say And it just kind of pops its head up here and there. Again, a little warmer again. I can see little touches of it. And I'm just dragging it across the canvas very gently. Look, I'm hardly touching the canvas. Just want to create a little feeling of texture up there. Um, just because it's so bland, it's so kind of flat up there, just wanted to add a little hint of that in. Same on that side, look. Let's just add a little bit of texture. Just give it a little touch of movement. It could be a hint of a reflection from something, from a cloud or something. But I think it's nice just to have it there, don't you? A little bit here. Now, we leave it at that, okay? What I want to do is take my palette knife. I'll take a small palette knife. And I'm just going to take some white. Pure white. And I just want to really make that spot really shine. So I'm just going to take some white on my palette knife on the side and I'm going to just drag it across like that, okay? Clean the knife again, pick up a little bit more and go the other way. Just give it a bit of a punch, you know what I mean? I think it helps. Does it? Let me know what you think. I think it's not bad. Okay. I think it's time for me to zoom in and maybe do a bit of work on the reflection down here. On the, or not the reflection, these ripples. Well, the reflection, yes. But the ripple more so. Okay. That's not bad, is it? I want to start putting in the real dark colour. So I'm going to go back to uh, da -da -da, my medium stubby brush. All right. And let's get some phthalo blue. I need more phthalo blue, a little bit. I'll just get some on my palette here. Won't be a second. And I'm going to mix phthalo blue with some black, okay? Phthalo blue, a little black. And I'm going to start putting in that. Maybe a hint of crimson as well. So it's real blacky, a rich blacky purple, okay? I'm going to start putting in this. Let's imagine the line is coming across sort of here, isn't it? Okay, and we stop at the tail, like so. I'll take a little more pink in that. A little crimson just to neutralize the greenness of that phthalo blue. So, a little bit more crimson. Now, it sort of comes out like that. I'm basically now just looking at the photograph, okay? 
that's all just look at the photograph and take your time take it nice and handy um, it comes in like that Lot, very squiggly isn't it it's just really squiggly fill that in and you may have to go over this now a couple of times because it's mixing with that color underneath all right black and a bit of crimson Now, I'm going to go up into this ripple and I'm going to go into this ripple a little. And I'm going to just really just start forming this very dark reflection, okay? And if you wish, you can put plenty of turpentine on your brush for this. So don't be shy. It'll help the paint really move around much nicer. I'm going to go like that, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go out more. And I will refine a lot of these with the pointy brush in a moment. This is just to fill it in a little bit quicker. You understand? Okay, and then it kind of comes like that, it skips. And don't forget, we're not painting, this is not the final dark reflection. We will be putting little hints of blue in between this here and there. So don't be trying don't try to get this absolutely perfect first time. Come down here. Let's imagine there's a little bit of a ripple there. You see, just like that. And then it kind of meets up. So you can kind of start to see what I mean, what I'm trying to achieve. Um, you know, I'm trying to keep it simple. Yes, I really make an impact with the painting. Um, okay, let's go here. Let's bring this wiggle down a bit further. It kind of goes around a little ripple there, doesn't it? And then it kind of comes off at that ripple and comes around slightly. And they all kind of meet here in the center, don't they? And let's there's one or two kind of breaking off over here. This is sort of a, you know, it kind of breaks off a little bit. Just to suggest the roughness of that ripple just behind the ripple and there's another bit then over here like that and I will round off some of these edges with a small brush later um, I just want to kind of get the general the general feeling of the, the darkness in Okay, so we're starting, we're just starting to come together, albeit slowly. Um, right, let me take a look, let me take a look, a look, a look, let me look around. What I'm going to do next now is start darkening some of the ripples behind some of those ripples, okay? So I'm just going to take that dark colour, so some crimson, some black, and I'm going to go with a hint of blue, okay? Because there's actually a very rich purple in behind some of those ripples I'm going to go behind some of those ripples and I'm just going to put a very fine kind of a line so this is the crest of the ripple okay the very tip so we're going to have a dark on the back and a light on the front okay uh, a little bit there a little bit there like that and now I'm just kind of starting to refine some of the lines just a little bit um okay i'll leave that i'll darken this again you see you'll probably have to go over this dark patch just once or twice just to keep it really dark do you understand now let's go over here i have a nice couple of darks in behind there like that and another one behind that i 
and there's only so much you can do with this small brush so i'll just do I'll, I'll, I'll paint the larger sections with this brush just to get them in and i move on to a smaller brush then for some of the smaller sections okay now let's follow this one around here and imagine that goes through there in fact we could actually bring it through here as well and imagine it goes around and it comes up there like that as well okay so taking our time and we can put a couple of small ones here and there in between And I might put just one or two, a suggestion of one or two small little ones over here as well. Now I'm going to stand back and take a look. Just look at it, make sure. Are you happy with it? Yeah, I'm not. You know, it's, it's not too bad. It's taking shape slightly. Okay, slightly, when I say slightly. I'm now going to move to a smaller brush. Uh, should I go for a small pointy brush? No, or should I go for um let me think what brush should i use i think i'll go for this small flat i need a small do you know what i need do you know what i need i need a small stubby that's exactly what i need a small stubby brush so i'm going to see if i can find one amongst my huge collection of small flat brushes i have one here look it's similar to a small stubby that'll do me fine I'm going to start putting in some of the lighter colours, okay? Starting, now what I'm going to do first actually is, right, I'm going to start softening this black back into the reflection, okay? Now you see the way I'm pulling this back? And this one? Softening it backwards. This one the same, just a hint. So I'm now just giving you the height of the reflection, the height of the ripple rather. You see the way that's giving you the height, so it's coming up like a wave in the ocean. That's giving you now the height, giving you the impression of the height of the ripple. Let's soften some of these back. I'm putting them sort of outwards, okay? Letting them disappear. And I'm not going to copy the painting, the, the photograph exactly, okay? That's not the point. Um, it's just a representation of the photograph. That's all I'm trying to achieve. And I'm then going to get some light, uh, I'm thinking some light pink, maybe. Let's try it. Some crimson, some Naples yellow. And I think even with that colour, I might try and just get some of that colour in between the blue, here and there. Just to give it a bit of a glow, okay? And a little bit around here, just to brighten it slightly. I know it's very dark down here, um, but particularly over here, I want to just concentrate on the colouring. Try and get the colouring just so. Okay. Um, put a bit of that in around the back here, because I want to brighten that in a minute anyway. I want to brighten it slightly. So I'm going to just put plenty of that. I was picking up some black, that's fine. Okay. Then I am going to take some of the lighter blue again. So I'm kind of swapping and changing, moving, you know, going from one to the other. And we're almost to the end of part one, I think. I just want to create some texture with the brush with this light blue okay 
Now, this is by no means the end of the ripples. I have a, lot, I have a huge amount of work to do on the ripples, but I just thought you might like to see the process of it rather than kind of skipping through and doing time lapsing and all that kind of stuff. I'm not a big fan of time lapsing. Um, I just don't see the point in it. Nobody learns anything from a time lapse. You just get an entertaining video, in my eyes. Okay, you might pick up one or two techniques, but for the most part, um, nobody learns. And that's not nice, I don't think. I'm going to put some of this colour in around some of these darks. You can see now, I'm just kind of, you know, picking up some of the brights. That's all I'm doing. For, I mean, for example, in around these ripples here, there's very rich blues. I don't know if you can see them or not, but I can see lots of rich, rich blue in there. And I want to get that colour. I want to pick out that colour. It's a nice bluey, kind of a pinky colour. Not pinky, but a bluey mauve sort of a colour. I want to get that colour in. I want to really show off that colour. Especially by the waves. Or not the, I keep calling them waves, the ripples. Stephen, the ripples. I want to get that colour in there, okay? And coming around. it slightly and I'm going to just transfer some of the colour up overhead just to help blend sort of the bottom blues upwards a bit rather than having two completely different sections Let's take some white, phthalo blue, some lots of white, lots of phthalo blue, and I'm going to just kind of pick out some, start picking out some of the highlights, okay, so I'll come around like that, and I'm pulling them back off of the ripple, okay, like the crest of a wave. And as I keep saying, this really is the very early stages. I'm just building it up bit by bit. Now I'm going to come down and start picking out a few little bits here and there. Um, so kind of making that black reflection a little more solid. All right. Well, let me get some crimson and some phthalo blue and a little bit of purple down here. And lastly, I'm going to take some phthalo blue with some black and some crimson. Again, I've run out of crimson. I've got to get some crimson on my palette. How is that looking from where you were? Are we starting to see ripples forming? Tell me what you think. Let's put some nice purple in here. Look, a nice rich, rich dark purple. Okay. Plenty of crimson, plenty of phthalo blue. I'm going to start adding a bit more pink because I do want to I don't want to kind of, I don't want to cool down the painting too much. So I'm just adding a little touches of crimson to help keep it kind of slightly warm as well. I don't want to go very, very cold with all of this. So now, next thing I'm going to do is move to a small brush, okay? I'm going to take a small pointy brush 
I have a nice new pointy brush, size one. And I'm gonna start taking some darks. I'm gonna get some of this blue here, okay? And some of this nice rich dark color. And I'm gonna start refining some of these up here. And I just want to add a little detail to it, okay? And over here, I'm going to start picking out some of these slightly darker ripples. Then I'm going to go with some of the black, this very dark pinky black, okay? And I'm going to go down here and we have just very dark patches of colour down here. So we have some very bright highlights hitting some very dark shadows, don't we? And I'm going to let this dry as well and kind of add more to this at a later stage, perhaps in part two. Now let me take some black, okay, on its own. I'm just going to start refining some of these, you see. And it comes out like that. Comes out and then it kind of turns back on itself like that, you see. So the idea with this is to make the outlines very sharp and crisp. You see what I mean? Very crisp and very sharp. Let's go over here and do some over here. And what are we doing for time? Okay, we have 11 minutes left on camera. That's more than likely to be more four minutes or five minutes. So let me just get some of these in very quickly before we run out of power, because this camera just goes dead. It doesn't give me any warning whatsoever. I really need to invest in um, professional camera. But this is sufficing just for now. Lord knows they cost enough money, don't they? But this will suffice. And before I stop, look, I just want to show you one or two of the highlights, how I do the highlights. I'm going to take some. Now, will I zoom out again? Okay. Make sure you can see everything there now, okay. I'm going to take some. With a clean brush if I can call it clean. Um, I'm going to take some yellow, some white, let's get some Naples yellow as well, and some cadmium red, I think. Now this very bright colour, okay? It's like a very bright orange kind of a colour. And you see in here, the sun is kind of coming over and hitting. A bit more red, actually. Keep it more on the warm side. And the sun is catching the tops of these ripples, you see? Just like that. A couple of little dots here and there. Um, a couple on the top of that. Isn't that lovely the way it just kind of catches some of those ripples? Isn't that wonderful? So let's take some more yellow, a little bit more of the red. 
Let's go over to this side and try it here. I'll start with a slightly warmer kind of an orange and I can brighten it then, you see. And a little bit there. I've been very careful not to overpower this with black because if you hit the black with this, you're going to end up with a green. So I need to be very careful with that. I'll try some Naples yellow and crimson. Let me try some of that. And a little on that side over there. I'm going to soften it slightly back in. Oh, this is starting to look a little bit more lifelike now, isn't it? Well, that's probably a better colour, so I'm going to go over this one with that colour. And it's slowly taking shape, everyone. We have a lot more to do yet. We have a heck of a lot more work to do on this. But I'm happy so far. I'm relatively happy. Okay, Naples yellow, little crimson little white and uh, we can get some gentle highlights down here like that and let's see um, let's put one over here just a slight bit of a highlight there So it's taking shape, I mean, slowly, albeit slowly, but it is taking shape. And I'm going to add another little bit of colour on this side over here. And perhaps accentuate some of those lights out here as well, yeah? Now what I will do is take a little black and I'm just going to go behind some of those just to find them a little bit more, that's all. And my friends, I am going to leave it at that, I think, for now, okay? Uh, join me in part two. And we will continue this wonderful painting of Swan with some ripples. Some nice reflections around the swan. And we'll walk away on all of this, okay? Not to worry. So let's just soften some of these in and just try not to fiddle too much. So I'll see you in part two. Thank you very much for watching. Um, thank you, my friends. And I won't be long.